Okay, so one of my favorite games is Fading Suns. I've been a fan of it since it first came out. I bought the first edition not long after it came into the game store that I worked at back in the 90s. And I got myself a game going, got folks playing it. The second edition came out, picked that up, kept going. And I ran it for two years. I believe it is to date the longest game that I have managed to keep going. And that sounds great, but it's also a game that had a lot of my failings. It sounds crazy to me when I say it, but two years of running the game and most of my players just didn't really get it. They got it enough to show up, they got it enough to go through the steps of various adventures and stuff, but nobody else really ever got into the setting. Nobody took the initiative and learned anything else. Nobody felt the pull or the drive of the setting. And I literally had people come up to me in the latter days of the game and say, like, I just don't, I don't get it. I didn't understand that. I didn't understand it at the time. Honestly, I don't understand it now, both that they continued to play, but also that they didn't get it because to me, it didn't seem that difficult. Fading Suns is essentially Dune with some Star Wars, some Middle Ages history, and I don't know, a dash of this or that other thing. It's not necessarily a particularly original setting. It's a really nice hodgepodge of various space opera themes with a more gothic sort of bent. Um, anyhow, I really like the setting. I like the setting a lot. I will admit, the actual game, the game mechanics, pretty mad. Uh, again, I have the first and second edition. I never picked up the third. I don't I think the third edition one, I don't think it was around for very long, and I don't think it did anything particular with the system. I could be wrong on that. And then the fourth edition, I believe, is still in print. I have also not picked that up. Part of it's the price. It's a little bit pricey. I think it might be an import because I think it might be owned by a German company now. I don't remember exactly. I haven't really been following it that much. Uh, but also a big part of it is I have, especially now, I have pretty much everything that came out for the first and second edition. I have all the material I would ever need to run a game for years. And I haven't run a game for decades. So I'm not going to pick up the fourth edition. I just have no need to do so. If I ever did run the game again, if I was ever able to get the game to the table, if I had players who who liked it or thought it looked cool, I wouldn't use the game mechanics from it anyway. I would use something like basic role playing. Anyway, that was three and a half minutes of usual blabbing from this guy to say that I just picked this book up. This is My Time Among the Stars, Tales of the Fading Suns. It's by Bill Bridges. This is essentially a kind of in-world write-up uh, from a character, his name is Illustro. Uh, yeah, let's see. Illustro's journals were originally featured as the prologues for Fading Suns, for the Fading Suns series of source books, each of which presented new knowledge about a facet of the universe. All of them are collected here for the first time uh, a transcri and tr as transcribed by previous four readers for previous four readers by Bill Bridges. Um, so this is a collection of those in-world fictions that appeared at the beginning of each supplement. And I, I love the idea of in-world books. And yes, I know, obviously, it's got Bill Bridges' name uh, all over it. It has... Uh, you know, publication credits and blah, blah, blah. So it's not like it's going to be, and it has this, this cover. It's not like it's going to be fooling anybody, but I like the idea that I could hand this to somebody and say, 
oh, you know, you want to find out about, um, like, the Voldrop or something like that. I could hand them the chapter, you know, with a link on the chapter, I could hand it to them, and they could read this entry that is something that they could theoretically actually find as their characters. I think that's very cool. Now, there's no art, so flipping through it doesn't really make a lot of difference, but uh, I don't remember. I, I don't remember these well enough to know. Um, oh, let's see. Oh, there's like a. I don't remember which books each one comes from. Uh, so there is a little history of the Fading Suns universe. That's nice, with just sort of a, a basics of it and a glossary in the back. That's also nice to have. Um, Oh, and we have the key for the various things. And do we have, yes, we do. We have a reproduction of the Fading Suns galaxy, I guess, map. Uh, anyhow. So this, I think, man, I think this really does mean that I have, like, everything. I'm pretty sure I have everything done for... There's Noble Armada, the miniatures game, which I actually do have Noble Armada. I don't have everything for Noble Armada. But otherwise, I think I have everything. I even have the dang LARP that they did, Passion Plays. I don't LARP. I, I, nothing wrong with it. It's fine. If you're into it, that's great. Whatever. I thought at one point, this would have been in the 90s, I thought I might try getting into it. At the time, it, you know, it was it's it's like today when I try to get into a role playing a tabletop role playing game, and all I can find is D and D or Pathfinder groups. Back then, if you wanted to get into LARPing, all I could find was Vampire or World of Darkness groups. Uh, there was a Call of Cthulhu LARP book. I have it. Uh, that was put out. Nobody, nobody I knew, nobody anywhere near where I knew was doing Call of Cthulhu as a LARP. Fading Suns, nobody I knew was doing it. Um, I think there was even like a, I can't remember, Castle Falkenstein or maybe Space 1889. I definitely remember as the steampunk thing kind of started to first evolve out of the retro future stuff that was sort of popular before it, uh, there was a certain push for live action of what would become steampunk. Uh, but I don't think any of that was happening in Maine. Boy, though, vampire. That was happening. Anyway, uh, I even have this collection of short stories that was published way back when. I remember really enjoying these. Uh, it's been a very, very long time since I read it. I mean, this book was new when I read these stories. And this is, uh, when is this? 1998. So, it's been a while. Uh, anyway, Fading Suns. Very cool setting. If you are into, if you want something Star Wars-esque, but you want it a little bit darker or weirder or more grim. If you want, honestly, if you if you want uh, uh, Warhammer 40k, but maybe just aren't in love with the specific lore, uh, but you want some of the vibe, especially some of the vibe of the old Rogue Trader. I think there's some of that in there. Or if you want Dune, but you don't want to dive deep into the specifics of Frank Herbert's Dune lore, this is a cool alternative setting for you because it is that kind of thing. Again, that sort of science fantasy, if you want to get whatever, space opera, that kind of thing. And I know that the core play for, as, as presented in the basic book, the idea is for you to be playing movers and shakers. You're playing people high up in the priestly orders, various priestly orders. You're playing people high up in the nobility, or you're playing people high up in the guilds. Those are what your characters are going to be. They're going to be big, prime, people who get stuff done, people who have power and connection, because it's about the passion play. It's about the big, sweeping epics and galaxy-spanning conflicts, it's like Dune. You, Paul Atreides would be a perfect character to play in this. Uh, Irulan would be a perfect character to play in this. And that is how it's sort of default set up. I've always kind of liked, and this is actually true of Warhammer 40k too, and maybe why I never 
connected with some of the later stuff that went on with that. But I find normal people living against that kind of a backdrop to be sort of more interesting. So I kind of like the idea of, uh, I had a, a, a campaign idea at one point that I wanted to put together, which was starting out everybody as peasants. You know, you're on some agri, ag I can't even use words, agrarian world, living as peasants, and you start to learn about some of the cosmic conflict that's going on through various means. You're probably aware of space travel. You've heard the stories. You know the legends, but you haven't done it. And as the campaign would go on, I figure that the elements of that cosmic conflict would seep into the local. And then at some point, characters might have the opportunity to either uh, scoot on board starships or to find a small starship or something like that to use for themselves to learn things about how to use starships whatever i don't know i didn't have all the details worked out because i never even found a group that i after this game wrapped up and i was pretty exhausted and mentally beat up about it i uh honestly i don't really remember running all that much after that but I certainly uh, didn't try to get a campaign going right away. And then a, a while later, I did try to get a campaign going. And that was, it was my Fading Suns campaign that I tried to get going. That was the horror story I had, which actually got me to quit gaming for more than 15 years. Uh, I think we got four sessions in before I absolutely lost it and uh yeah that was a miserable miserable experience and um that changed me a lot uh i'm still a little bit uh it's still like getting back into the hobby in 2019 and trying to run games i'm still very gun shy when i'm running stuff and i'm only recently it i say recently because i have a hard time getting games going but in the one shots that I've run, I've only sort of started to feel some of my old uh, confidence in magic that uh, kind of got beat out of me in the end of, of my time gaming back in the 90s and very early 2000s. Um, yeah, yeah, wow, Fading Suns, memories, whoo, I'd memory hold that part for a little bit, I guess. Time for a little beer to put that fire out. Bye-bye, mm. brain cells. Okay, so that is my time among the stars, Tales of the Fading Suns. And also, as you may have noticed, me blathering about a whole bunch of other stuff not related particularly to this book. Isn't that grand? Uh, if for whatever reason you enjoyed that kind of discussion, you could always like and subscribe. Leave a comment. Please make it a constructive comment. Comments like nobody cares, uh, you know, it doesn't doesn't help anybody. I get it. You know, I'm not for everybody. I'm not even for most people, and that's fine. Uh, anyway, check it out if you want to. I recommend Fading Suns. Uh, I think I think you can get the second edition book. I wouldn't recommend going for the first edition. It's the, the actual physical quality of the book is a soft cover and it was not a good physical book. I still have my copy. It looks like hell and I'm gentle with my stuff. I try to take care of my books. Usually if you see a ding like there is on this cover, that's because that was there when I got it. But my Fading Suns book looks beat up. Uh, and it's because it was just a low quality book. I mean, parts of it came apart. Anyway. You can probably get Fanny Sun 2nd Edition on eBay or what have you. Pretty cheap. I think it's pretty cheap on there. I don't know about the 3rd Edition. Never even saw a physical copy of it. I know nothing about it. And I barely know anything about the 4th Edition. To the best of my knowledge, the only source book I would ever care about getting that I do not have has still not been made. To the best of my knowledge, the third part of the War in Heaven, which 
gets into the Anunnaki and the cosmic horror behind the setting, that book has, I believe, never been written or never been published in four editions. And it is, you know, it, it's like, uh, I could be wrong on this. Um, my RPG history is fuzzy at best. But I think there were supposed to be like, a, a, I think there were two corporate war books for Cyberpunk 2020. And there was supposed to be a corporate war three. And it just never came out. And then they did like, a third edition, which everybody tries to ignore, and then now there's Cyberpunk Red, and I think all of those events are wrapped up in the history of Cyberpunk Red, but I don't believe that third book ever actually came out to flesh out the story in your Cyberpunk 2020 game, I think. I don't know. I didn't get the... the I didn't buy into the whole corporate war. I wasn't going to be running that if I ever ran Cyberpunk 2020. However, the Anunnaki source book would be a super helpful thing to have for this, and it really is... The only missing piece, as far as I'm concerned, from the game, and to the best of my knowledge, I didn't do any research before recording this video, to the best of my knowledge, that missing piece has still not been produced. Obviously, I ran the game for two years. You can run it without it. I had my own concepts of what the War in Heaven would look like, who the Anunnaki were, what their goals were, etc., 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 and I ran a game for two years using that as a basis. However, I would like to see what the creators of the game had in mind so that I could then take it and use it however I saw fit. Uh, I'm going to do that anyway, but i just like to know where they were going to see how I want to fit it into my own material. Yeah. Wow. That's a long video for me not really saying all that much. Yeah. Until next time, take care.